be talking about building a mobile app with GA's own Peter Bell. Uh -huh. So take it away, Peter. Mandy, thanks very much. So how to build a mobile app? There's a number of things that I want to talk about here. What we're not going to be doing is spending the time to dig into the details of how you actually program in Objective-C or Java with the Android libraries. That will be far too much content to cover in just an hour. What we're going to be talking about instead is if you're a business person or if you're responsible for developing a mobile strategy, whether you need to build an app or a website, we're going to look at what's the landscape, what are some of the technologies you need to understand and what are some of the approaches. So we're going to start by talking about the importance of mobile. We're not going to take too long on that, but really just hitting the high points, why we have to care, how important mobile development is for the future of web sites and web applications. Then I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about the mobile difference, because it's not just a matter of taking an existing website and throwing it onto a smaller screen. So it's important to understand some of the design drivers that will affect the way that you build a mobile app as opposed to something for a larger screen. Then I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about developing for mobile. How do we actually do that? Looking at everything from building mobile websites, uh, taking a responsive approach, or perhaps creating a completely separate design and a completely separate site for your mobile website. And then looking at, if you need to build an app, how do we really do that? Should we be using uh, tools like PhoneGap or Titanium or building native apps? What are each of these things, and then what are the trade-offs between them? Then, I'm going to talk briefly about this idea of moving from the concept of just mobile. So you're talking about, oh, I've got a desktop device, and then I've got a mobile device. To starting to talk about screens and understanding that over time there are going to be more and more different internet-enabled devices that we use to access information, and that it's important to have a strategy that approaches, that supports all of the screens that will be relevant for the kind of business you're trying to build. And then finally, I'm going to give a few remarks on picking a strategy, uh, and then there'll probably be a little bit of time for questions at the end. So, the importance of mobile. I decided to pull just two or three data points to give an idea of just how important mobile is these days. Here was a, a great quote that I saw recently. Apple makes more iPhones than humans make babies. So this is uh, from the last quarter of 2011 showing that the adoption of mobile devices is on an unprecedented scale. It's absolutely sweeping, not just developed nations, but around the world. But it's not just about devices. Facebook added 110 million mobile users in six months to the extent that more than half of Facebook users were accessing it through a mobile device. So that means that the primary goal for, that the primary way that people interact with Facebook now is from iPhones and Android devices and other smartphones. So clearly that has a big impact for the way they need to allocate engineering resources and how seriously they need to take their app development and also uh, the ways that Facebook needs to ensure that the website works well on a mobile device for somebody who doesn't have one of their apps. But it's not just about community. The, the third example was this. Amazon sold more than a billion dollars through mobile devices in the past year. But this is talking about, this was this article comes out from 2010. So years ago, uh, Amazon was already seeing a substantial part of their uh, traffic and a part of their revenues was coming from mobile devices. So mobile commerce is absolutely here and it's something that we need to think about seriously. So given that mobile is important, what are some of the differences with a mobile device? And I'm going to talk here specifically about phones, but then uh, we'll talk about other devices like iPads and Kindle Fires and, and the, the kind of broader tablet market and the large screen market a little later in the presentation. But let's have a look at some of the differences when you're designing for a phone. The first thing is that it's important to realize that it used to be thought of that when you were talking about mobile devices, it was really just on the go. You had all these pictures of a guy sitting you know, on his bicycle checking stuff out on the phone. And that's a reasonable way to think about mobile in the past. But mobile has become much more all-encompassing than just being an on-the-go strategy. And so now perhaps the best way to think about mobile is as ad hoc. 
So what does that mean in practice? It means that there are a number of use cases you see for mobile. The first one is around micro-tasking, and this is perhaps a, a good way of thinking about mobile in general. Who wrote that book? Where's the nearest deli? What's the quickest way to the cinema from here? Those would be examples of the kinds of micro-tasks that people typically use mobile devices to work with. And th there are three main use cases typically within micro-tasking. The first is local. So I'm looking for a deli near here. Where's a good place to, to go grab some tequila? So it's specifically looking for things in your environs because you're probably out and about, you're traveling, and you're trying to find local resources that you need access to. So that's absolutely one of the use cases still. So this maps very well with the historic on-the-go focus for mobile apps. But another use case is when you're bored, whether it's uh, waiting for a meeting, whether you're on the subway, if it's someplace like New York, it's a chance to quickly catch up content. And this is why it's becoming increasingly important to provide ways that people can access and read content on mobile devices. And you're seeing better and better synchronization, things like the ability to view pages in Safari, but then save them for browsing on a mobile device. So that way you can actually look through uh, pages or papers or information online even when you're offline. So it's that way of just saying, I've got five minutes and I want to use it by learning or doing something. And then the third use case that is really quite different to the first two is this whole idea of a, a second screen. Because one of the things we're really seeing with mobile now is it's not just on the go. I see, I find myself doing this, but, but I see a lot of other people doing this as well. I might be sitting right next to a laptop, but for certain pieces of information, I'm gonna use my phone instead to access it. It's when I can't be bothered to pick up the laptop. Uh, it can be at home, it can be in the office. It's another way of accessing information as an additional screen. If I just wanna check my calendar quickly or get information on local cinemas playing something. Anything where, again, it's that, that quick, easy micro-tasking. Often I'll use a mobile device even when I'm not on the go and I actually have access to other computing devices. And I think this use case is going to just continue to grow, especially as we get uh, moved towards 4G connections so that we're getting faster download speeds to mobile devices, as we get better processors on the device so that they can do a better job, and as we get better displays and larger displays for clearly viewing and accessing the information.